So I want to talk about Butoh. Butoh is this avant-garde experimental performance style that began in Japan in the late 50s, early 60s. The founders of Butoh, Kazuo Ono and Tatsumi Hishikata, had been trained in Western dance but didn't feel like it fit their bodies. So they wanted to find a way of moving that fit their bodies more authentically without going back to traditional Japanese ways of moving. Butoh is very much about an exploration of your own relationship to your body, your relationship to your psyche, your relationship to the world, your relationship to the universe. And for that reason, the techniques that Kazuo Ono and Tatsumi Hijikata pioneered are in some ways universal because it's not about finding a Japanese way of moving, but of finding your own ways of moving. And there are certainly a lot of analogs in the West to the type of work that they did. And I want to talk about that too as the series goes on. Their style involved finding the impulse for movement from inside yourself rather than have it being imposed from outside. So when a performer, even a director or a choreographer might choreograph a company, they wouldn't say, hey, move your hand like this. They would give them an image that might give them the impulse to raise their hand. You know, your arm is floating on the surface of water. Your arm is being lifted by a string. And those are just very simple, um, almost simplistic images that I just gave. The images in Butoh, we'll get to talking about them later, are much more, can be much more surreal, much more intense. Tatsumi Ishikata and Kazuo Ono, the founders of Butoh, took very different paths in their art. Ishikata was a very mercurial artist. When he was finished exploring one aspect of his art, he would move on to another. The early Butoh performances he directed were more reminiscent of what we might call the happenings from the 60s than any kind of structured dance piece. They were wild, they were chaotic, they were scandalous to Japanese society at the time. But after this period, Hishikata changed his style. He began to work with large group of dancers in a very specific choreographed way. And this is the style of Butoh that is most well known in the West. The low to the earth, the white makeup from head to toe, the stylized movements, the slow movements, the dancers moving in almost unison the strange facial expressions. All of this was developed in this period of Hijikata's career that began in the early 70s. Kazuo Ono, on the other hand, took a very different path. His work was always improvised. Kazuo Ono never directed a dance company. He was a solo artist all his life. He would sometimes, you know, in these early pieces, would perform with Tatsuhi Hijikata, would continue to perform with his son, Yoshito Ono, but his work was very different from Tatsumi Hishikata's. It was always improvised. Every night he would try to be true to his authentic self. I saw him perform three times in New York City in 1999. He was in his 90s, if I remember right at that point, but he was still an amazing dancer. I saw him three nights in a row and every night he performed differently. The music was the same. His son Yoshito Ono was dancing with him in some of the pieces that night. And Yoshito Ono would do the exact same choreography every night. But Kazuo Ono would bring a different energy, a different feel every time he performed, um, even different costumes on some of the nights. It was an incredible string of shows and they just got better and better after each one. I feel very blessed and lucky to have been able to actually see him perform. So that's a very different style of Butoh. Um, Kazuo Ono, very improvised, trying to be true to the moment, never repeating himself, feeling that there's something deadening about doing something that is choreographed. It's the same night after night because your mind is never the same after night, every night. Your spirit is not the same every night. Your, your, your mind, your heart is not the same every night. They developed from these two different branches two different branches of Butoh. One, which is highly choreographed, highly stylized. Groups like Sankajuku, um, Dairakudakan are really good examples of that. Um, my teacher's Koichi Tamano's um, Harupen Ha is another example of that. And then there's this other style, which came more out of the Kazuo Ono branch of Butoh, which is improvised, where the dancers will perform differently every night. It's much more personal and people like Mintanaka and 
another one of my teachers, Akira Kasai, they would perform more that personal improvised style of Bouteau. I want to talk about another aspect of Bouteau that I don't think I've communicated quite as well yet as I would like to. And that is the thing that to me is the heart of Bouteau and the thing that attracts me most to it. It's a thing that's difficult to talk about without sounding cliched, without sounding pretentious. But one of the aspects of Bouteau, which is very important to me, is the idea that it frees you from yourself. It's not mysticism, but it can be seen as a spiritual practice. In fact, Kazuo Ono talks very deeply and sincerely about the spiritual side of Bhutto. Um, that's one of the reasons, for example, that one of the aesthetics of Bhutto is the shaved head, the white makeup from head to toe. The idea is you're using the makeup as a way to eliminate the self, to free yourself from yourself. And Bhutto is about moving from a place of non-intention, which is one of the way it achieves that. For example, a modern dancer, if they want to dance water, might think, how does water move? How can I imitate the, water, the movement of water with my body? A Bhutto dancer would be more likely to go deep into themselves, try to create in their imagination a sense of being water, and then just letting your body move freely, spontaneously to the image. Um, one teacher I had put it like this, you don't want to move your body to the idea of the image, but to let the energy of the image move your body. So you're not moving from intention, you're not moving from self, you're not even moving from desire. You're trying to free yourself from all of that. In fact, one of my favorite quotes from Kazuo Ono, he said, being free is not doing what you want or what you think. It's being liberated from thought, being liberated from will. Being free is not doing what you think or what you want. It's being liberated from thought, liberated from will. And combining that with the imagery of Buto, where you can embody anything, you can embody animals, you can embody the sea, you can embody, like I said, some surreal images we'll get into later. Another quote I remember, Sanko Juku, I saw them perform in Berkeley once. I wish I'd saved the program notes, but from my memory, they said something like Buto, they want to free themselves from the nervous agitations of personal psychology. There's a lot more to talk about in terms of the internal image of Bhutto, but I did want to talk a little bit about that, about the spiritual side of Bhutto, about how it opens you up to the universe and frees you from yourself. Um, that's a very important part of Bhutto, and um, we'll talk more about that and the different approaches to it um, as we go through this series. So anyway, that is a brief rundown of uh, what Bhutto is about. Um, I hope I gave some sense of what might make it interesting. Um, over the course of the next few videos, I will explore, like I said, the history of Bhutto, the aesthetics of Bhutto, Western analogs of Bhutto, my own approach to Bhutto. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking it and sharing it so that other people who might enjoy it can also find it. Also, if you'd like to see more videos like this, please consider subscribing to my channel. I plan to release videos every two weeks or so. Some will be essays on the intersection of art and spirituality, and there will also be videos of my own work, my music, and my short films. And finally, if you'd like to support me as a creator, please consider joining my Patreon page at patreon.com slash bobdinatale. I'll put a link to that in the description below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time.